Well, good morning, guys. It's uh, day 0123, it's Friday. Last day for me, full day of the show. I am walking to look for some stuff. I got some buddies behind me. There's DB, Danny Black, and my friends, right? So last night was awesome. Went to dinner with a bunch of buddies, went to the Tops Q&A, and that was, I would call, normal. Uh, they didn't say anything, you know, <laughs> revolutionary or anything, nothing new really. But it's always fun to go and to see if anything happens. Then I went to the uh, YouTube get together. It was fantastic. There were something like 250 people there. And so all you guys that came and had fun, I'm glad you did. Hope you, hopefully you made more connections with other people, made new friends. That's awesome. And I had a card I was thinking about last night that I looked at yesterday. And when you wake up thinking about a card, you probably just need to go buy it. And I did already the first thing this morning. And now I'm gonna go look for some just low end stuff, kind of running out of money. And, and so a lot, lot of today hanging out and talking with people and trying not to get run over. It is a madhouse here, guys. We'll talk to you soon. Everybody hates So we're here at the National 2023 in Chicago. It is amazing. It's staggering the size and scope of this show. Uh, it's been awesome. It seems a little cooler today, which it seemed cooler yesterday morning, and then I heard it got very hot in the afternoon yesterday. What we're looking at here, though, is a massive set of PSA 10 1986 Fleer Michael Jordans. They say it's worth six million dollars. I believe it. All these PSA <laughs> I believe 10s, it. I think last I knew these are going for about 150,000, maybe yeah. 125, and it looks like there are a lot 25 of them <laughs> at least so, yeah probably not quite six million if you ask me but a lot quite a few million that's pretty crazy it's really cool so cool man uh thanks for coming last night to the thing did you have fun did they get yeah. together uh, it was great i loved meeting all these viewers and other youtubers that i had never met in person and seeing a bunch of youtubers that i hadn't seen in a long time since last year awesome all right mike and i are going to keep walking around we'll catch okay. you guys soon so I just met Carol, he, he, he corresponded back and forth about 49 Leaf and his dad's actual experience with 49 Leaf buying the stuff and he brought some stuff. We happen to see each other here on the floor, which is a miracle by itself. He has the Garrick Premium, which is just one of those amazing cards. We've got a five, he just got this graded a few months ago. We've got the Babe Ruth Premium. I mean, these are stunning, absolutely stunning. Uh, we got Ed Walsh, and this one is awesome. Also got Walter Johnson. So just amazing, cool stuff, and connections that you make, and you see people, and you hear, we talk, email, back and forth, and it's so cool to see these in person. They're awesome. Hey guys, we're here at the Robert Edward Auctions booth here at the National, and I'm with one of the biggest influences on my hobby, Mr. Dick Perez, famed sports artist, Diamond Kings, Perez Steels, you name it. Great to meet you in person, sir. I've talked to you several times, and I'm so glad to meet you. It's an honor for me, so thank you for uh, agreeing to talk to me. Yeah, I'm glad you are in. I'm very, very, very grateful for your interest and your pretty compliments. When you come to a show like this, have you been to nationals before? I can't remember. I've been, I've been to one or two, and I've been to a number of smaller ones at the local place, like in Philadelphia. Right, the Philly show. Yeah, and, and I did that with my partner Frank Steele in order to establish our real steel products. And, uh, you know, we were there selling and, and, uh, and signing and what have you. But uh, I'm not doing that after uh, maybe when I, when I became the whole thing. Uh, I don't think I fell above it because I, 
I didn't have, I, wasn't, I didn't like the idea of selling things, you know, like this, right? So, um, yeah, this, this has been overwhelming. I didn't have to get into a convention, a little bit of a lot of as massive as this is. This is unbelievable. It is massive. And, and, I, and, and it's coming, and I go around looking at the art that I'm using, cabinets and what have you, to say, and the interest that uh, people have in this. I mean, it's totally, totally committed to, to uh, buying these things. I mean, loving them. I think that people have it. So it's a, it's a, it's a model that you can get. I mean, I don't know. I'm sure it's the only country that has this one. Uh, I'm sure it is. But it's, uh, it's just marvelous to see the interest and the crowds and they keep coming and they keep walking around. Uh, I'm, like I said, I, I, I would get lost if I didn't have my I would I would have to have a telling the market uh, my wife would be asking if I would be left to go on and on alone. Where did you see him last? <laughs> He's still alive. But anyway, it's, uh, it's quite a place. And quite an event. And uh, I hear it's getting bigger and bigger. So I can't imagine the But this place should be what it is. Well, your mark on the hobby is it's a legacy. And I think you recognize that. Is that something you spend any time thinking about what your legacy is? Not just in art, but in the sports card hobby because of this and your contributions to it. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, you can't avoid it. I mean, when you're told, and, and, and uh, I, most of my autograph signing is done through the mail, and the letters that people write to me uh, are incredible. Here, today I had a signing session that you actually have those expressions in real life. And I was very concerned, not just do they compliment me on the art and tell me how wonderful it is, happy it makes me, but they also listen to what I have to say, but what I have to say is important because I've been part of that the industry that they have no knowledge of. How would I be things today? Who thought that up? Why, you know, why, why are, 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 did you have readings from what you did? Right. Yeah, I mean, just a bunch of questions that the people are interested in finding. They can ask you directly. Yeah, they can ask you directly because, you know, so, yeah, I think uh, uh, I found out another thing today, that people not only care for what I do with my hands, but do with my mouth. Well, thank you so much for your influence on me and this hobby. The joy you've brought me through your heart, and I just appreciate it. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Every time you come to me, I really I battle now. It's great. Keep me going. All right. Thank you, Dick. All right. Go. All right. I just got done talking to Mr. Perez. Now I'm talking with Mark Evans. He's the director writer, creator, whatever, of the Dick Perez documentary that's going to be coming out at some point. How did you decide, let's go to the National? Yeah, it was something that I kind of thought about like, for the third act of the movie, something where my hope was that there would be interactions with fans and Dick and people telling him what they meant what to them. And so I kind of had that penciled in as something I wanted to do. And then uh, REA, Robert Dunn Auctions, uh, had that same idea. They were like, why don't we do something on our So it all came together really tremendously that way. And then this has been awesome. Two hours of people just, you know, lines to meet Dick and uh, tell him stories and, and hear stories from Dick. So it's everything that I was hoping for. And uh, that would be in the middle. Well, you, this is kind of a grassroots effort to put this movie together. You've incorporated the hobby into that. And you, why don't you talk about what you did and what it meant for the people that contributed? Yeah, so as far as like, the Kickstarter. Yeah, yeah, um, Kickstarter, yeah so, yeah. so we, we ran a Kickstarter campaign for the movie, which was something that I've done on, on films uh, that I've done in the past. And this one, I gotta say, it was uh, the most successful campaign 
uh, in the fact that it was funded. We reached our goal within like the first week. And one of the things we did that uh, you know we were able to dig was we basically decided let's do a new card set. Let's do a 25 card set that is exclusive to the movie. So Dick, Dick uh, picked all the work. Some of it was work that he'd already done that had never been cards before. Some of it was brand new work. And um, and that was great. And I think we were able to uh, you know and I'm in the hobby myself. You know my son who's been collector. And uh, so yeah, it was nice to get to know a lot of people and understand kind of what the hobby really is and what Dick's influence on the hobby was. And then seeing it all come together here in person. Really so I'm excited. I got one of the sets. I contributed to the Kickstarter campaign, obviously, and I'm excited about the movie. Any, what's the timeline here? What are you thinking? What's the ballpark? Yeah, so my, my goal is to finish the movie by the end of the year. You know, it's late July right now. We're at the National. We're shooting something next month in August that takes place in Brooklyn, also in Philly, where he's got a permanent exhibit at the Smith Bank Park. Um, probably in September, we're shooting something in Cooperstown. There's still other interviews. There's still a lot to do. But, um... I'm having so much fun working on this. It's like my favorite. You know, I've got several projects that are kind of in the works. So this is one where it's like my first time I want to work on this project. <laughs> so, um, so my goal is to try to finish the movie by the end of the year, have it cut and everything, and then release sometime next year. Awesome. So many uncertainties with distribution when it comes to documentaries. So I don't know when necessarily that'll be, but that's, that's my goal. Finish it this year, release it next year. Awesome. But the cards, we get those in September. I'm so excited. Though, yeah, we're going to shoot the printing of those yeah. also in Philadelphia, which might end up being in the movie too. So yeah, these card sets could be featured in. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate it. So I'm here with Dr. Jim Beckett. Jim, thanks, Mike. Good to see you. Thanks for coming on the show. Recap a little bit, kind of just talking to people about their feel of the vibe here. What do you like about this show? What's cool about it this year? Any new? I have people say, it's the best show ever, and we're about halfway through. Terrific. Cards are moving, aren't they? Like, tons of cards are moving. Cards are moving, actually. This is my time to be. Yes. Yeah. Tons of cards are moving. A lot of action. Tables. Miles. Is the hobby dead? <laughs> the hobby is... is <laughs> what are you growing for? Ah, okay. You know, people think that fanatics is going to be 10x to be a lot of And they think that over 10 years, that's really 25%. Yeah. 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 It definitely feels crowded. Today felt it actually a little bit less crowded than yesterday, which is ironic. Uh, I think so too. Tomorrow should be great crowds over the weekend. Um, yeah, thanks for giving me a couple minutes. To talk bet. All right, buddy. Long live the hobby. Amen. <laughs> All right, so I think I lied. It's not cooler today. It's hot. I'm over on the newer section. It is just crazy packed. So many people, and I'm sweating immediately as I just walk around. So don't guess they've gotten it fixed. We'll see. All right, back at the room. It is the end of day three for me, Friday. And another another good day. Today was not really about card pickups, although I did pick up a few things that I'll show you here in a minute. And it's more of just little stuff. I say little stuff. It's just not huge, super big cards, but great cards that I love for my collection. And we'll, we'll get to those in a second. I had a lot of great interactions with people today, a lot of just hellos and getting to talk to Dick Perez was certainly uh, a, a great thrill for me to just talk to him for a few minutes. He was a super busy guy today. Lots of people probably feel about Dick Perez the way I do. He influenced their collecting a lot. And so that was neat. Um, last night was awesome. Uh, I think I talked about it a little bit earlier, but so many people, that came to the event that was just people hanging out and having fun talking to what it's all about. And then, uh, tonight we got another one, uh, another hotel, another get together with a bunch of guys. So that should be fun. And we're gonna order some pizza and hang out. So let's just show some cards. Not a lot about the show today. <clears throat> you saw a bunch of stuff earlier. So yeah, let's look at some cards. Hang on. All right. First off, uh, 
during the Dick Perez interview before that, he was signing some cool stuff. I got, I remember this as a kid, this, this was actually a card, I think an 82 or 83 Donruss. I can't remember. It's a little bit bigger, like blank postcard. He signed the bottom of that. And then <clears throat> he had these larger Roberto Clemente. This is, I think, from the puzzle, the Donruss puzzle. And these are numbered uh, 5,000. He had a bunch of these signed that he was giving away. And so really cool to get that. Then last night at the uh, YouTube get together, got this as a gift from Ed Wesker Griff, kind of, <laughs> kind of a silly thing, big, sexy Bartolo Colon. Uh, I don't even know where he got it, but he, he said I had to have it. So yeah, that'll go in the beast. <laughs> I got a card graded at CGC. Wanted to try that out. Uh, I had this card from as a gift from Dave Blue Jacket 66, Bob Lemon rookie, 1949 Bowman. And I just wanted, sla wanted it slabbed. I didn't want to pay for PSA to slab it. So I thought at $15 or $18, whatever it was, I'd give CGC a shot. I don't like the baggie, but overall, I mean, they have a great slab. Came back at two, not a surprising grade but I am just thrilled to have the card in a slab. So there's that. Got a couple of uh, 1933 Gaudis. I'm, I'm kind of just, when I see these at a show, or at, I mean, just kind of picking up Hall of Famers when I can, when they're cheap. I want to say this one was 75 and I paid 50. Um, the mark, you can't see. There's actually, the, the dealer had a ton of them. They all have what looks like the name Bill on this top corner, but you really can't see it at all. Um, it was like this one kid's collection. I loved the idea of buying a couple of cards that a kid might've owned back in 1933. So Kiki Kyler, Hall of Famer. Epa Rixie, Hall of Famer. I picked this one, I was only gonna buy two. He had tons of them, but I, <laughs> the, fa the look on Epa Rixie's face on this card made me laugh. I was like, yeah, I gotta have that. That's pretty cool. So I got a couple of Gaudis. Uh, Michael Double X the Beast was opening a case of Finest uh, from 2023. He pulled this and I bought it from him right there for 20 bucks. <laughs> I'll take a Larry Walker, if you don't mind, $20, number 99 green on card. Yep. Got this from the same dealer I bought the <clears throat> Nolan Ryan from yesterday. And I say me, it was really JT found these. And this one's number to 30. This is the 2013 base Ripken five-star autograph. Uh, 150 paid 140. He wasn't, he wasn't too eager to, to deal, but never pay sticker. I didn't pay sticker. This was another thing from the get together last night. I am uh, excited to add a transcendent Nolan Ryan autograph to the collection and number to 10, uh, nice mag, you know, this is just a pretty amazing set, super expensive. So Nolan Ryan, Rangers uniform. Yep. We'll do that. Two more cards. I got this 92 ultra Tony Gwynn. This was in 92 ultra. They had a basically pack inserted Tony Gwynn autographs. I think there's 10 cards in the set and there's, I don't know how many were autographed. I'm sure I could look that up. I don't know off the top of my head and I can't remember what the print run was on these, but I liked this one when I saw it cause he was batting and I've been wanting to pick these up for a while. You can tell the real ones from second mark, secondary market ones. These have a uh, embossed stamp on them from Fleer. So, that's an easy way to tell if they're really pack the pack inserted autographs and slabbed up. Uh, this was actually from Raleigh Fingers collection. I bought it from Marcel, who has all the Raleigh Fingers cards. And this is a card I, I think one one of the greatest you know, one of the top fifty autographs of all time that's ever been inserted in packs. This idea, so bought that. And the last card was the first card I bought today because. I'd seen, I'd seen this yesterday. <clears throat> I thought about it last night. I woke up thinking about this card. 
And that is one of those things and signs when you go, yeah, I need to go ahead and buy that. I love these upper deck, just like the Ultra you just saw, these early kind of as the pack inserted autograph world was being developed and starting, there was, you know, Chase the Reggie, then you had Hank Aaron and Joe Morgan, Johnny Bench, a bunch of these, Ted Williams was one of them, Nolan Ryan's one of them. And I didn't have the Williams and I was able to work out a deal for this. Uh, stickered at 800, I paid 700, which is way more than a normal Ted Williams autograph, but I wanted this one. So that's in terms of this card. And there's a there's one guy that has like eight of these here. His prices were higher and he wasn't budging. He said, I'm not, I, buy them or don't buy them, I don't care. And so I found a guy that had one that was willing to, to work with me. That's about what comps are, so I just, the old, yep, if you're thinking about it a while, you probably just need to buy it. So that is it for today, guys. This was my last day here. Uh, I leave early tomorrow morning, maybe go to the show for an hour or so. Doubtful to have a recap tomorrow because I just won't have enough time to, to really do anything. Maybe say bye to a bunch of people, but it's been a great show, great experience, always fun hanging with my friends. So yeah, we'll talk to you guys soon. Keep collecting.